The expression raw material refers to primary raw materials used either in their raw state or after being subjected to one chemical change. But if we add the word secondary, the term then refers to raw materials that have been transformed into a product usable in production processes as a replacement for the initial raw material. The basic principle is that a single material is used more than once. Why is it important? Well, because construction products account for 40% of all raw materials extracted from the Earth's crust, like sand, gravel, clay, iron, gypsum, and so on. So turning to secondary raw materials as a replacement for steel, aluminum, cement, and plastic has the potential to reduce these emissions by almost 40% by the year 2050, according to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. I'm James. And I'm Amy. Together, let's decode the ideas that are shaping the future of sustainable construction. Constructing New Worlds by Saint-Gobain. Behind words, solutions, and innovations for a sustainable future. The expression secondary raw materials, also known as SRM, emerged in the industrial sector and in the construction industry in the late 2000s. Concretely, the term can refer, for instance, to waste sewage sludge from water treatment plants recovered and reused in construction materials. But this example represents just a tiny proportion of the total materials used in the industry at a global level. Even if a great deal of progress has been made in recent years in certain channels, especially aluminum, paper, gypsum, and glass. For other materials like timber, textiles, plastic, bio-waste, or aggregate derived from construction and demolition waste, a second transformation stage for products has not yet been fully developed. And that's why the proportion of secondary materials incorporated into products has barely increased in 20 years. One of the reasons for these problems is the status of SRM. It's because it's midway between waste and a product. If, technically speaking, transformed residue can become a usable product in manufacturing processes, things aren't quite as simple at the regulatory and legislative levels. In fact, not everyone agrees at what point or after which processes waste becomes a secondary material. Changes are happening. Europe, with its Green Deal, has a circular economy action plan and is taking steps to change SRM from the status of waste. Yeah, and there's also quality and cost factors. For example, when concrete structures are demolished, deposits of natural aggregate can be saved using select deconstruction techniques that separate concrete waste from other materials. But these practices are not yet very widespread. Above all, once recovered, demolition waste is often polluted by other waste because it's not separated at the source. It then has to go on to be depolluted before being transformed. In addition, their composition may be different from similar products recently put on the market. In fact, given that some products may have been inside a building for 30 or 50 years or more, their chemical composition may have changed over time. This is a long way of saying that it's difficult to obtain quality close to that of a virgin product. And let's be honest, it's hard to make a convincing case for using SRM when the cost is higher than for a primary raw ingredient. Despite everything, in most countries, for instance, European countries, actors are taking SRM in this direction through various initiatives, legislation like France's Law for Green Growth and research programs. Yes, too many to really mention, but it's worth citing the European Interreg Ceramco, which is the secondary raw materials for concrete precast products. It's a project that ran between 2017 and 2020 and increased the use of secondary raw materials in prefabricated concrete products. Yeah, and another European project was set up to facilitate reuse in construction. It's called Facilitating the Circulation of Reclaimed Building Elements, or FCRBE a joint project with seven other actors, including Bellastock and the CSTB, France's Scientific and Technical Center for Building. There's a few interesting examples there. But to take things a little further, we need to get to a point where secondary products come up to market standards and do not weaken the overall performance of materials. Regulations could, for example, make it compulsory to use a proportion of SRM. This would encourage different industries to step up their efforts Another option could be financial incentives to promote recycled content or to increase the costs and restrictions against landfilling and try to reverse this trend. 
That's exactly what the new extended producer responsibility rules for construction materials in France are aiming for. They set a target for the recovery rate of demolition waste overall, as well as for specific materials like glass or plaster. There's also a target for the percentage of construction materials reused. And on top of all that, economy of scale is needed so that industrial actors can reduce their costs. This will come if the market becomes more structured. That's the direction the European Union is going in, developing SRM markets to facilitate the circulation of good quality recycled materials in the European economy and minimize the need to mine new resources. Indeed, Amy, what's needed is an ecosystem of actors working together on the subject. So to summarize, granting a different status to secondary raw materials and allowing industry actors to define performance characteristics and organized channels will offer solutions to this major environmental issue, reducing pressure on natural resources as well as cutting greenhouse gas emissions. This won't happen without more regulations and financial incentives. Not to mention partnerships. This is a team effort after all. Constructing New Worlds by Saint-Gobain. Behind words, solutions, and innovations for a sustainable future.